Lesson 92 starts on page 316, and it's about line graphs. Now, we've been doing some lessons on finding missing information. We've been given different statements where we had to find information from those statements. We've used pictographs and bar graphs in Lesson 85. Now we're going to use something called a line graph. Line graphs are just a way to represent some information in a nice, clear way that's easy to understand. Many times you're talking about a change over time. You're talking about comparing a change over time, seeing how a value fluctuates, like maybe temperature, for example. For example, look at this graph that I've drawn on the board here. We have dates along the bottom or the horizontal axis, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we have temperatures. Those are in degrees Fahrenheit. And let me just write that down next to it, 50, 60, 70, and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say on Monday it was 55 degrees. So what we would do is put a little dot to represent that. And then Tuesday it was 60 degrees. Wednesday it jumped up to 75 degrees. And then maybe a cold front came through. And Thursday it dropped back down to 50 degrees. And then it started warming back up a little bit. And Friday it was 60 degrees. Okay, and so what you could do is you could connect these dots basically and that's what a line graph is you have line segments there or sometimes there might be just a straight line representing some information and so like in this line graph we can see how the temperature changed throughout the week from Monday to Friday and that's easy for us to look at and we can kind of see a pattern there we can see where the highest temperature was where the lowest temperature was we could find out an average temperature for the week as well from that information. Why don't we use the line graph that's on page 316 and let's do some practice problems using that line graph on page 316. Okay, so I'm going to read you some statements and this is just like a finding information problem. I'll read you a statement and then you have to look at the graph to figure out that information. So listen to this from test number two to test number three Sean's score dropped from an 18 to what score? Well, look at that line graph. It dropped from an 18 to about a 17 because that is in the middle of 16 and 18. So we would just say a 17. Okay, let's do another one. Just listen carefully here. Sean had one perfect score of 20. According to the graph, which test was that? Which test did he get a 20 on? Well, you just look at the graph and you find the highest point on that line graph, and that would be test number five, right? So we can just say test five for our answer. Now, practice problem C, what I want you to do is use that information in that table there, and I want you to make a graph. And so we have days and then cups of lemonade. So like on day one, somebody sold two cups of lemonade. On day two, they sold seven cups. On day three, they sold three cups. Day four, eight cups. And day five, 12 cups. So let's make a graph that represents that information. And so first what you do is just draw like a vertical line and then a horizontal line. And you can think of it basically as like a vertical number line and then a horizontal number line. Because don't you do number lines with like tick marks on them that are evenly spaced? Well, yes, you do. That's the same idea here. Okay? So usually our time, we represent that on the horizontal line. And so let's just put tick marks, try to make them evenly spaced. We have five days there, so we'll start with day one, two, three, four, five. We can put the numbers underneath them. And then for the cups of lemonade, let's just look at our range of numbers here. Our smallest number is 2. Our largest one is 12. So why don't we put our tick marks 2 apart? And so we'll have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I need to make my vertical axis a little longer. And then we'll put 12 right there. Let's go ahead and label them. I just skipped a, a number there so I didn't have to cram them all so close together but between 
6 and 10, of course, would be the 8, and then 12 is above 10. Okay, so now let's mark our points on here, and it's kind of like coordinates. So what we would do for day one, we have two cups of lemonade, and so we put a point right there. And you see how you kind of line up day one with the two? See how those two kind of come together, and you put the point right there where they kind of intersect? Now day two, we go over to day two, and then we go up to seven. So that would be between the six and the eight. So we put a point right there. And you don't have to be super accurate on this. You can use graph paper if you want to, and then a pencil and a ruler to help you line everything up perfectly. But it's not that important. If you're not real good at making sketches and doing your tick marks and stuff, though, you probably do want to get some graph paper out. Okay, now... Day three, you go over to day three, and then up to three cups of lemonade. So that would be between the two and the four, so about right there. Now day four, you go over to day four, and there was eight cups of lemonade sold on day four. So you go up to the eight. And then day five, there were 12 cups. So we go up to there. Now we connect the dots, and we start. We have to go in order here. We go from day one to day two, then day two to day three, day three to four, and four to five. And then we're done. We've drawn our line graph. Let's do one more problem. I've got a D, a letter D for practice problem D down there that I'm boxing around there so we can find it. And let's just think about this. There's a couple of days here where there is a steady increase in sales of lemonade and there was a couple of days where it went kind of went up and down, but there are a couple of days where there is a steady increase in sales. Between what two days was there a steady increase in sales? Well, just look at that line graph and just see where you kind of get a continuous line going between two days. And so that would be between day three and day five, right? You can see, let me just mark it in yellow. You can see right here, from here to here, there's a steady increase in sales. It doesn't like go up and down or down and then up or whatever. So there's a steady increase in sales between days three and five. So we can just write three, two, five for our answer there. So think of these line graphs. Think of them as like a horizontal and a vertical number line kind of stuck together. And then you use those to help you find out different types of information. Okay, well that's all for lesson 92.